In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our daughter Elena shared something with me this week, a couple little factoids I thought were very interesting. I don't know if you knew this, I did not know any of these, that Cleopatra lived closer to the invention of the iPhone than the building of the pyramids. Interesting, huh? Uh, I didn't know that Stonehenge would have already been in ruins at the time that Jesus walked the earth. And here's a really surprising one. What do you think is older, the Aztec Empire or Oxford University? (laughs) Oxford is older. Surprising. All interesting facts, not all that meaningful in some ways, but in some ways very meaningful. Because everything I mentioned to you, although this is not the reason it was posted on the internet, but I found very interesting, every single thing I just mentioned to you was done with one purpose in mind. The search for God. Mankind has been searching for his creator since the very beginning. And we haven't stopped yet. In fact, another time, not in today's sermon, I'll hopefully help you understand that everything about the rejection of God that we see growing in society is really about the search for God that people don't want to undertake. But that's another sermon. Today, let's talk about man's search for God. Why? Because on today, we see this search illustrated in a very powerful way. Because today is the Sunday we call Zacchaeus Sunday. Archdeacon David would tell you that when you hear the name Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus is searching, and what we find that when you hear that name, Lent is not far away. In the Russian tradition, it's the first pre-Lenten Sunday. We're not quite there yet in our tradition. But this is a story of somebody searching for God, whether he knew it or not. All we know is that Zacchaeus lived in Jericho, he's short, and he's a tax collector. That's all we know. Now, as a tax collector, we know more because we know a lot about tax collectors, mainly because of what we learn from the Bible and the literature around the Bible, especially the Gospels. What we learn is that tax collectors, as I shared with you before, were very despised people. They were people among the Jews who made their living by robbing their neighbor, Jews, their brothers and sisters, their neighbors, the people that that they saw every day at the marketplace, and they could do it with the backing of the Roman occupying army. So tax collectors were not popular people because they could say, well, this is the task the Romans are going to take from you. I'm going to collect twice that, and they could pocket their own cut. So we know those things about Zacchaeus, but we know one more thing. He was looking for Jesus. In fact, he was looking for him so much that when he heard Jesus was coming, he tried to find a place to see him, couldn't do so, and then took the bold step of climbing up that sycamore tree. Everyone was going to see him up there. Again, remember, these people around this crowd were not fans of Zacchaeus. A very bold thing to do. He really wanted to see Jesus. And from that spot, he could. And if I ended my homily there and I said, you see, people are still looking for Jesus. Zacchaeus searched for him and he found him. You'd probably say, that's a good story. It's a good message. Only that's not the meaning of the story. Zacchaeus as a story really isn't even just about searching for Jesus. Because if he was searching for Jesus, it was able to see him from the tree. If that's the end of the story, what do we get out of that? Nice, he got to see him, and Jesus walked by, the end. This is a story, a very powerful story, about an encounter between one of us, a human being, and the man God, Jesus Christ. But how did the encounter happen? Not only was Zacchaeus looking for Jesus, what this story is really about is that Jesus was looking for and found Zacchaeus. 
If Jesus had just walked by, that would have accomplished Zacchaeus' task. I looked for him, I saw him done. But Jesus is looking for Zacchaeus. And he looks up and he sees him in the tree. He doesn't just say, oh, I see you, hi. He says, Zacchaeus, come down. And this is the profound lesson I want all of us to understand about this gospel teaching on this particular morning. Yes, we search for God. We've been doing it from the beginning. But the thing that we don't always realize is that God has been searching for us. And when we meet him, we only meet him because he has been searching for us. It really is the story of our lives. A story of a misunderstanding about God and forgetting that he is the God who has been seeking us. You know, when I first got to St. Vladimir's Seminary, very first day, very first service, trying on our cassocks for the first time, feeling a little awkward. We go into the chapel, and I'm standing there in the chapel, and I look on the iconostas. And like most iconostases, ours has a closed book. Most of them have an open book on the iconostas with a Bible verse. And the Bible verse held by Jesus in the icon, on the iconostas, in the chapel at the seminary, reads as follows. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And it struck me. What an odd verse to put on the Bible, the words coming out of Jesus' mouth, at a seminary. I was at seminary because I thought I was choosing to follow Christ. I had studied, not only finishing a college degree, preparing other ways, getting ready to enter seminary, driving across the country, getting the cassock made, all of those things, because I thought I was looking for Jesus. And what was I surprised to find out? I, hadn't, I had read that verse before, but it never hit me in the same way. But when I read the words of Jesus that when he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, everything switched. It's really interesting, too, if you know where that verse goes. It goes on to say, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. That's the verse in front of a couple future priests at a time that go through that chapel. That he has chosen us. You know, we think we seek him. Maybe you came to church this morning because you wanted to find God or find him in a little closer way. Maybe, hopefully, you seek him in going to your icons to say your prayers. Whatever it is that we do seeking God, it's a good thing that we do them. It's a good thing to seek God. Only let's not be mistaken. We don't find God because we seek him only. We find him because we seek him. And when we find him, what do we find? He has been seeking us. It was the fact that Jesus looked up into the tree to Zacchaeus, says, Zacchaeus, come down. This day, I'm going to go to your house. And he did. And we hear a very short part of their dialogue. But the dialogue ends with Zacchaeus promising to return fourfold of everything he had stolen. Now imagine that. As a tax collector, he had taken unjustly lots of money. And if he had only said, I'm going to re return it, everything I stole, I'm going to return it, we'd say, well, that's impressive. People come all the time in confession, you know, Father, I've been thinking about something. When I was eight years old, I stole a candy bar. And when possible, I say, you know what? Whatever you can do to return something you've stolen, it's a good thing to do. But here's Zacchaeus, having lived his entire career to that moment, taking and taking and taking and taking and taking, and now he says to the Lord... Whatever I have taken unjustly, I'm going to restore fourfold. Zacchaeus' life could not have changed any more dramatically. What would it take you to pay back somebody four times what you ever took from them? Well, if the word miracle came to your mind, you're right. It would take a miracle. And that day, the miracle began for Zacchaeus. It's not coincidental that when I come to your houses and the priest comes and he says, as you came into the house of Zacchaeus, so bless this house. 
Because when salvation comes to our houses, to our homes, especially the home of our heart, we're never the same again. And that's what happened to Zacchaeus on that day. Today is a day that we hopefully begin to figure God out a little better. How many times we confuse our relationship and say, well, God is sitting up there, maybe with his arms crossed figuratively, and waiting. And if we're honest, we think sometimes he's waiting impatiently. He's waiting judgmentally. He's waiting angrily. And we have all of these wrong ideas about God. What is he doing? He's waiting for us to seek him so that he can seek us. We're going to see this more powerfully illustrated in a few weeks when we hear the gospel of the prodigal son. Again, we could mistake the story and say, well, he makes it back to the father's home because he was there feeding the pigs and he was hungry and he figured I could be a servant and go back to the father. But when he goes back to the father's house, what happens? The father runs out to meet him. We may say, well, why was the father not out searching every town? Well, here's the reality. God cannot search us out and find us unless we were open by seeking him. He has to wait, not out of his laziness or his anger or his judgment. All those things are lies. He's waiting out of love to say to us, if you want to come, come. And we take those little of steps towards him. What does he do? He rushes in. That's the God that we heard about that met Zacchaeus today. And that's the God that is still seeking us. So yes, keep searching. Keep looking for God. Not because you on your own might find him. Keep searching because that's what it takes for you to communicate to God that you want to find him. And that, hopefully from today forward, you want to be found. That's what made all the difference for Zacchaeus. And that's what will make all the difference for us. We as a race have been making the mistake for our entire history, building pyramids and temples and even idols, trying to find God in our search for him. And the reality that I hope is the new reality for all of us is that all those attempts only, only result in finding God if we search for the true God and be open for him to finding us. That's the reality of the entire story of the scriptures from beginning to end. It begins in the Garden of Eden. And after Adam and Eve sinned, God said, Adam, where are you? He was searching him out and letting him know he was searching him out. And since then, we have been forgetting that God has been searching us out. It's time to be found. It's time to be found by the God who has always been searching for us. That's who he's always been. And it's time for us to see him as that God, the God who seeks us, who searches, and who finds. That's the God of love. That's the God of the Bible. That's the God of the church. And as he told us, if we seek him, we will find And we'll find him because we'll find him having already begun and now completed his search for us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.